Hello everyone, my name is Hemingway Jones. Welcome to the channel. This is our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, pretty much everything that has to do with self-expression and with keeping you motivated and inspired to keep writing. Coming to you today from my library, as I often am, what I'd like to talk about today is something we talked about a few weeks back, some fountain pen myths. Only in discussing that, some more were unearthed. There were some great comments that offered some perspectives and some additional myths. So today, without further ado, let's cover, quickly, seven more fountain pen myths. Before we begin, I'd like to show you which pen I'm using today. This is the Schaefer Legacy from circa 2005. It has this amazing 18 karat gold inlaid nib, fantastic art deco styling. And the reason I'm using this is that I've been working back in the office quite a bit lately, and this is the perfect business pen. It keeps me confident and focused, and it performs extremely well. So a few weeks back, we talked about all the various fountain pen myths, and many of you had great suggestions in the comments, and you'll hear some of them today. And there are always these ideas that we carry, that we just believe because we've heard them enough from various sources, and maybe we've questioned them, maybe we haven't. But now's a good time to shine some light on some individually, question them and see if they hold up to scrutiny. What do you think? Let's dive in. Our first myth today is that fountain pens are messy. We hear this quite a bit from a lot of people. I guess they've had experience with them in the past. They've made a bit of a mess and then they gave up. Well, it is true that there's far more variables with a fountain pen than using a ballpoint. And a ballpoint is very self-contained, although on occasion they blow up as well, don't they? We've all had that happen, thinking back to my school days. And sure, with a fountain pen, in many cases, you have an ink reservoir or a cartridge inside, and it certainly drips down through the nib. So if the nib is pressed up against something, there can be an issue, but a well-functioning fountain pen that is filled correctly is no more messy than a ballpoint or any other kind of pen. So what are the things we can do though to make sure that it's not messy that I sometimes make a mistake with is that when you fill it, you really have to be obsessive about cleaning it because one little tiny drop of ink can go a long way. So now I'm making the argument that pens are more messy but sincerely, you do everything right, correct, be diligent when you're filling it, and it's certainly no more messy than a ballpoint. Myth number two is that fountain pens are difficult to use. And this one almost makes me a little bit sad because I can certainly understand that if you're looking at it from the outside, this wonderful world of fountain pens that we've all discovered, that you're looking at all the different variables, all the different nib types, all the different materials, all the inks that you can choose and everything else, let alone writing with it, can seem overwhelming. And I think we all can help to dispel this myth with our generosity, with sort of being evangelical 
in sharing our passion for this hobby with people that might not normally be into pens. So it's certainly not any more difficult to use than a ballpoint, but it does take a bit of technique. My very first fountain pen was a Waterman pen that was gold. It, it was a bit like an expert, but I don't even remember which model it was now. This was in the early 1990s. And I had seen people use them, but I never really did it myself, so I didn't know how. And I pressed that nib and I was so tough on that pen that it broke right at the screws and it just snapped in half. It couldn't be fixed. And to this day, I sort of cringe when I think about it because it would have been neat to still have the first fountain pen that I owned. The point is that fountain pens are not difficult to use, and I think each of us can sort of dispel that myth by sharing our knowledge and our generosity about how interesting and inspiring it is to use one of these fantastic writing instruments. Our next myth is one that I hear all the time in my comments over at TikTok constantly, and that's that nibs adapt to our writing style. How many of us believe this? How many of us don't believe this and yet still act like it's true? So have you ever lent a pen to another fountain pen enthusiast and you're sort of terrified that when you get it back, it's somehow going to change because it's adapted to how they write? that some minute change in how they hold the pen, just a different angle on the nib, inalterably changes it. And it's just not true. These nibs are made of very good materials that are designed to write in specific ways. And rather than them adapting to your writing style, you need to find a nib that suits your writing style. So if it's left oblique or cursive smooth italic, there certainly are nibs out there that can be customized to you and your hand. But it's not as if you'll be writing for many years and suddenly your stub nib only adapts to you and no one else can find that sweet spot because it is your pen. That's Hemingway Jones's pen. It's adapted to him and no one else can use it. Sadly, even though at some level, I kind of still believe it, nothing could be further from the truth. And I'm expecting some controversy in the comment section. In fact, I'll be disappointed if I don't on that one. Our next myth is that fountain pens are out of date and that no one uses them anymore. So this one I can understand a bit because fountain pens are sort of identified, say pre-1960, let's say pre-Kennedy administration in the United States. If you're watching an old film or you're reading an old book, the pen that's being used or described is certainly a fountain pen. And then there's also this idea of sort of a Darwinian progression from a quill to a dip pen, to a fountain pen, to a ballpoint, to a rollerball, and maybe to the Fisher space pen, because that just sounds like the most evolved pen, doesn't it? But we know, those of us in the fountain pen community, that it's nothing at all like that, that fountain pens are being used all the time and that there's constant advancement in the technology that in many ways, not every way, but in many ways, some of the fountain pens being made now are the most advanced and interesting pens ever made. If only they could get that Waterman 52 nib right though, wouldn't that be great? And they should bring back old celluloid. Is there any way they could do that? But that's an aside. So the idea that fountain pens are outdated, that no one uses them anymore, is just that. A myth. It's not true. There's a huge community of us that use these things. And sometimes it's almost like Fight Club. When you see somebody else with a fountain pen, you give a little nod or you start talking and have a conversation. So... 
my goal ultimately is to get broader acceptance on writing and with fountain pens specifically. So it would be nice to see them a little bit more front and center and not being so much seen as curiosities or remnants from the past. Our next myth is that you cannot use a fountain pen if you're left-handed. I cannot tell you how much I hear this in my regular life on TikTok, even here on YouTube. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now, I'm not left-handed, so I have to qualify everything I say. I don't know what it's like to be left-handed. My mother's left-handed and she has a really nice collection of fountain pens that she uses regularly. And we have this discussion and I've learned from her how to write with a fountain pen when you are left-handed. So let's say that it is more difficult, but it's certainly not impossible. And I won't get too much into it because I think this is an idea for a video for another time, but a lot has to do with hand position. If you write straight up and down, it keeps your hand out of it entirely and you never smear the ink. Plus the nibs are smooth enough, as you all know, that they don't need your hand to be right on top of them, driving them down into the paper. But on the bigger point, certainly you can use a fountain pen if you're left-handed. Because remember, there were no ballpoints before, I think it was 19, well, I think technically the first ballpoints were invented in the late 19th century, but they didn't come into wide use until the late 1940s, early 1950s. So that's the timeline. Certainly the big transition was during the 1950s into the 1960s. That's when everyone was really giving up fountain pens for ballpoints. And ballpoints certainly do make it a lot easier for people who are left-handed to write. So it's been great for them. But before all that happened, they didn't have much of a choice. They would have had to have used a fountain pen, before that a dip pen, before that a quill with their left hands. So to think that they couldn't do it or someone couldn't do it is giving a, a third of the population very little credit. I'm sure they were able to write. So it is possible to write with your left hand. This next myth may be the most controversial yet, and that is that either cartridges or converters are better in a fountain pen. I know you guys have strong opinions on this, and I will be very disappointed if I don't see a slew of comments telling me either that I'm wrong or what your opinion is, and I welcome that push back hard I know I'm about to challenge you guys but okay I think a lot of you know that I have a big TikTok presence and I review a lot of pens over there and I do have some sponsors over at TikTok and they're very generous in giving me pens which is very nice no, they don't know anything about my YouTube but that's all over at TikTok so some of those pens like the Caveco Sport I have more than one and in some I have a cartridge, and in the other I have a converter. Or the Lamy Safari. I have the Z28 converter in one of them, and I have a cartridge in the other. So in both of them, I'm able to test them and see, does one flow better than the other? Is there an advantage between a cartridge and a converter? Maybe a lot of you guys have done this as well. It's nice to do it side by side. So what have I found out? I don't think there's any discernible difference. I will say the advantage of a cartridge is that it's convenient, easy to store, great to travel with. The advantage is, <laughs> maybe I'm giving myself away, of a converter is that you can use ink right out of a bottle and occasionally if you have one of those sort of light flowing pens, you can cram down on the piston and push a bit more ink out and liven it up a bit. 
So, but in the actual performance of a well-functioning pen, they're about equal. That's my take. I welcome yours. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. Our last myth today, it's one I hear a lot, I just want to dispel it once and for all, and that is that fountain pens are only for signing your name. And it's just not true. You can draw with a fountain pen, you can print, you can write cursive, you can do anything you want, art projects, anything you can use any other pen for that I can think of off the top of my head, you can use a fountain pen except maybe filling out carbons. That's not a good idea, but it certainly isn't restricted to signing your name. So there's many things you can do with these wonderful pens. Dive in. So what do you think about these fountain pen myths? Did we dispel some of them for you? Are you still entrenched, shaking your fist, saying, no, you're wrong, I know it's true. Then please let me know in the comments. I'm always learning new things to share with all of you, and I appreciate every one of your contributions. Thanks very much. I also want to let you know I release new videos every Thursday at noon, so you can expect another one next week. So thank you very much for spending time with me today. This was a fun one. I got to be a bit more animated and to enjoy myself a little more, so I hope you did too. So I will see you all further up the road. Take care.